So were you the only black person in your high school? No, I was the only black girl in my elementary class up through, I'll say, the fourth grade. And then two other little black girls came. And then it was us up until the sixth grade. Now, ahead of me was a black girl. And she was the only in her class. And her name is Lisa Boyd. She's right now a fancy um, stylist. Um, she's That's my girl. I always looked up to her. She used to wear mink coats in the sixth grade. So it was like, <laughs> yes, deep at work early. Yes, work those hearts early. Yeah. So um, she ended up going to Howard as well. But um, so she was the only black. So no, I wasn't the only in my school. I was the only in my class. So um, I think there were maybe three of us in elementary school um, until the other two came. And then junior high, there were a lot more, you know, black people were coming into the community a lot more. And junior high allowed different sections of Shaker Heights to all come together. Hmm. So there were a lot more black people, but I was in honors classes. So I was in honors classes because I was the only little black girl in my original, which is Sussex. I went to Sussex Elementary School. I don't know if it's still there. I don't think it's still there. But um, I went there. So because I was the only little black girl, I got to, you know, be nurtured, you know, as I don't, I don't know. Because at one point I became woke. I'll say, like, in the sixth grade. I think it's so funny that, you know, what's his name? Uh, the rapper kid gets, like, credited with being woke when, you know, we've been talking about being woke since the 70s. But I became woke. Um, Gambo, Gambino. Yeah. So I became woke in, like, the sixth grade. And they showed us my, my I remember, my it was a white teacher. And she taught me about being a wasp. She wrote on the wall. I mean, on the board, I am a W-A-S-P. That means white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And I had no idea what that meant or why that was pertinent. And she showed me my first images of Africans. And the images that she showed were them with no shirts on. And the women were, you know, jumping around. And I was embarrassed and I laughed. You know, because, you know, I'm the only little black girl and you're going to put this on the air. Really? This is, is this, is this, it was, there was no Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So why, why is this with you, you know? So everyone was looking at me and is that how your mama titties look? No, no one said that. But, you know, I felt that, you know, so I laughed and she pulled me in the hallway and she cursed me out. She was like, these are your people. And I put this on for you. I put this on so that you would know and be proud of where you came from. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry that it embarrassed you, but then you have to take a look within. So I started volunteering my time with the, um, they call them the basement kids, but I, I don't know, you know, the kids that were told that they weren't smart because they were black. So I would volunteer my time in the basement. So then people started to think, I guess I was a basement kid because, so they made me stop. And that hurt me, and it, and it left a mark on me because for me, it became important to be, to rally for people who didn't have mothers like mine. My mom, when they tried to tell me in the first grade I couldn't read, they were gonna put me as a basement kid. She came up there with a bat, like, I the, oh, huh. <laughs> Well, the bitch could read when I brought her here. If she can't read now, it's because you did something wrong. So they brought in experts. They brought in a black teacher named Mrs. Brown. And um, I think she was one of, no, somebody was Mrs. Brown. But the black teacher, she really made an impact. She was fly. She was beautiful, you know, for the, like, 70s, honey. Huh? She had her, you know, her skirt, you know, was kind of A-line. And she would have her, you know, her bow ties. And she would come in and teach me and make sure that I was able to, you know, keep up with my class. So it was important for me to always give back and when that opportunity was taken away from me you know because they considered me i was in this group called the singing angels if you're from cleveland you know that's fancy you know i was traveling the world you know preparing for what i'm doing now 
and they tried to, you know, protect me. And it only made me want to tell the truth about my people even more. You know, I would see, I only wanted to date dudes from the hood, you know, because the, mm. the guys from where I was from were, were corny to me. Mm. You know, they couldn't dance. You know, I, we tried to do the rock and it just wasn't working. They were the pebble and, you know, and I remember one birthday party, the little boy from the hood beat up the little boy from the, the <laughs> fancy pants and then he got a spanking for beating up that little boy and it was just too much for me to handle, honey. It's, it's my birthday. <laughs> I ain't trying to cry. So, you know, I, I, I felt a need to have to defend my people from the stereotypes that were being put upon them by other people. Because when I went in and volunteered my time, I saw these kids were just bad. <laughs> That's all. You just, nigga, sit your ass down. Where your mama ass? She ain't spank you. You know you doing this just like we're doing this. They just don't know how to communicate with you. You whoop the teacher's ass. Where do you think they gonna put you? You literally whoop the teacher's ass. She was pregnant, boo-boo. Where do you think you're gonna get put? So, um... I would date, you know, slick dudes, you know, from the hood, and I would, you know, kick it with girls that were, you know, streetwise. You know, mm. I, I wasn't interested in where the box that they were trying to put me in. So it became important to me to speak their, their truth.